welcome in today's lecture we are going to discuss about the delegation of authority and decentralization in organizations in organize organizations people are continuing their activities the activities what they are supposed to do has been uh, the directions has been given by the, the people at the top and the managers and all other personnel they are continuing their works but then for doing that for accomplishing any activity at times and many times people require the managers require certain authorities so that they can give commands to others give orders to others they can carry out certain things now only because of that with that purpose the authority is given to the people who are working below by their seniors now what is an authority authority is the right to command it's a right given to the person concerned to, so that he can give commands to the people who are working under him it is also a, gives a discretionary power to the manager who can use the organizational resources by virtue of the authority given to them now when managers are working they require to use certain resources it may be human resource it may be financial resource it may be the material resource or any other resource so if they are given the authority they can use that uh, Uh, for the purpose of achieving the organizational objectives authority is acquired by virtue of rank or title or position in organization as you can very well understand the people are working at different levels in the organization according to the level the people are given different kinds of authority accordingly the people who are working at the top management may have got higher authority better authorities and people who are working down below they may have got certain different kinds of authority so it is by the virtue of the rank or title the classical view on this authority says that this authority passes from top to down and which in general you may have seen that in an organization the people who are working at the top the senior manager level they are giving the authority to the people who are working down below them and then they are in turn giving their authority to the people who are working uh, under them as subordinates so it's generally from authority passes from top to down but then there is another view of authority and that says that is known as the acceptance view of authority the acceptance view says that authority flows from bottom to up and if you can analyze this you see that people who are working below they are actually carrying out the orders of the people of the seniors who are working above them now if the people who are working down below they do not accept the orders of the people who are their seniors and definitely the work will not be done and then that authority will be useless so therefore it presumes that acceptance theory says since it is the people who are working down below they are accepting the orders of people that is created a mechanism by which the authority is passing from uh, people from higher level to the lower level this classical acceptance theory of authority let us understand it once again the classical theory suggests that uh, formal authority is transferred from top to the down in the organization and the word formal authority it's very clear to you that say authority is given by the organization formally and it passes from top to down from uh, ceo to the general manager to the general manager to the deputy general manager and like like and so on and so forth the authority that's passed by the manager by virtue of their position the organization is known as the formal authority but then the acceptance theory of authority as the top earlier the theory which is popularized by chester i bernard he says that authority stems from below because subordinates can always reject a directive although in general circumstances you may think that they will not reject it but there are always a chance that people who are working will be not accepted that authority is not accepted by them they can reject it and when they accept that order then only the power or the authority of the manager is being uh, affirmed by Now the junior people. So it is by the acceptance of the people working below, the right of the manager to issue the order or the commands is becomes justified. The acceptance theory of authority, as we are talking about, while making it, the Bernard suggested that there are conditions which should be met so that subordinates accept the order of the superiors. although it's an organizational relationship but still then the human beings at times if it does not suit to them they may not accept the orders of the superiors 
and the superior should behave in such a way so that people willingly and happily accept their orders and that is possible when certain conditions are satisfied number one condition is very clear that subordinate should understand the order many times the order of the managers given to the juniors are so ambiguous that the juniors cannot understand their orders and accordingly they cannot really carry out those orders so subordinates must understand the order it is the responsibility the duty of the managers to see the way it should be communicated to them next the subordinates believe that the order is consistent with organization goals the purpose whole purpose of everyone working in the organization is that they are going to achieve the organizational goals and whether it is the manager or it is the subordinates everyone has got that responsibility and everyone is a guard everyone is a soldier of the organization so if anybody is giving some order which is not consistent with the organizational goals whether it may be a junior or it may be senior need not be accepted with people people may not accept it so the subordinates should the order should be such which must be inconsistent with the organizational goals third the subordinates believe that the order is compatible with his or her personal interest well this is a human nature as you know the in the organization there is one thing which is going on is the achievement of organizational goals at the same time the people who are working they have got their individual goals in life and they should never come into conflict and it at a certain point of time if the subordinate believes that by carrying out this particular order his interest are being uh, disturbed then he may not accept it and therefore the manager should be able to either the order should not be like that or they should be able to convince and make them understand how it is not going to against his interests and obviously the subordinate should be mentally and physically able to comply with the order the manager's responsibility to see the particular order which is be given to the subordinate is capable of handling that it should not be beyond that and if it is given beyond that obviously they will not be able to accept it so after seeing this acceptance theory of authority now let us see when we, what it always talk about in general the power of the manager yes there is a power of the manager now what is this power we may sometimes think that authority and the power is the same but then there is slight difference between the two authority is the right to command or issue orders it's a formal authority which is given by the organization to the person concerned to issue certain orders it's a right to command but then power is much bigger than that power is much bigger in dimension power is the capacity to influence others no doubt that by virtue of authority a manager gets certain power but then it is not only that power which can really influence others it is the personal characteristics of the manager the leadership qualities of the manager that to a large extent influences the people who are working below and the word power is a capacity to influence others may it be from authority may it be from other uh, personal or capabilities of the uh, manager concern and as we have said that managers have power by virtue of their positions they occupy definitely they have got but then there are powers from their personal capacity or capability and power does not necessarily stem from authority and sometimes people have got authority but they don't have any power because they are not in a position to influence other people and people do not accept their authority that acceptance is a very important thing until only somebody accepts your authority how can you really say that there is power so the power and authority has got two different dimensions and this should be understood by the uh, people at various management levels so now let us see what are the various types of power a manager can enjoy so the types of power may be divided into two categories either is based on the position that the manager occupies or on the based on he as a person based on position there are three powers reward power coercive power and legitimate power now understand this reward power reward power there are certain managers if they have got the capacity or the authority or the characteristics to give rewards to their people on the basis of their works now when somebody gives a reward to person who are really working well and doing it with all their uh, sincerity and the managers are giving all those kinds of incentives or 
the motivation to them to the people by giving them rewards that will create an acceptance in the minds of the people who are working down below and accordingly the power will be vested with the manager concerned in certain cases of certain managers they do not believe in the rewards or may believe in the rewards but at the same time they use the forces the coercive power they try to dominate them they give them uh, uh, show their authority to them and they use all means by the use of either physical or mental force by which they try to uh, get the work done uh, from the people so that coercive power creates a negative motivation in the minds of the people who are working uh, down below and that it's because of the fear the people accepts the manager and that becomes a power for the manager and the third one is the legitimate power yes the managers are given authority to give commands to their juniors and because of that there are certain powers have been stemmed out of it and that power can be enjoyed by the managers if they were according to the rules and regulations and the authorities given to them but then at the same time this power should be complemented this power which is based on position shall be complemented by the personal quality of the managers concerned and the number one is referent power number two is expert power now the referent power is the certain people they have got a tremendous charisma and integrity and integrity and charisma create certain attraction for the uh, people the subordinates and those subordinates try to create relationship try to maintain relationship try to follow the people who are their managers and because of that uh, this the managers get a referent power which is seen uh, in people who are the dynamic managers who are very uh, charismatic uh, leaders in the organizations they got referent power another kind of power which is seen in the managers is the expert power the expert power is originated from the knowledge what a manager holds with him it is the subordinates always expects that the person who is under whom he is working the manager must have certain uh, legitimate knowledge the knowledge of the work so that in case of need they can get uh, necessary instructions and directions from them so that power itself uh, that uh, knowledge itself creates and power within the managers who are controlling the people now after seeing the authority and power let us see how this uh, authority is delegated and what are the things connected uh, with the delegation of authority as you know that uh, in the organization whenever there is an authority that must be complemented with the responsibility because the manager has been given certain powers or certain authorities to exercise to achieve the organizational goals they must be accountable and responsible for their activities they are doing so let us understand this responsibility first responsibility is the obligation to perform a task and account for the satisfactory completion this is demanded because the manager has been given certain authority given given those authorities which he can use and by using that he has got the obligation to fulfill the responsibility is to perform the task complete the task at satisfactorily as per the guidelines of the organization as per the dictates of the uh, directives to the organization towards achievement of the organizational goals and that is the responsibility of every manager along with the authority they are enjoying whereas authority is downward where responsibility is always upwards you can understand authority is given from the senior to the junior for the senior management person to the junior management person down below but then he the person the manager has got his responsibility to be completed towards his senior manager toward the manager who is senior to him toward the person who is senior to him so responsibility flows from uh, down to up where the authority flows from up to down now the process of delegation is that whereby the authority which is given to a manager passes from one level to the other level. now the manager at the senior level may be given some authority in turn he can pass on this authority to the person who is working down below and this process of continuous process by which the authority is being given to one person or the other in the uh, levels below that is known as the delegation of authority and that is the delegation process as you understand that in organizations there is a huge amount of work possibly and today's organizations are absolutely uh, full of activities in this dynamic environmental uh, situation now 
it is not possible for one person or one manager or even a handful of managers to complete the works towards achievement of the organization goals and therefore the only solution is that to divide the work between different people and so uh, the one load is given to the other person who is working down below with certain authority delegation of authority is there and he is also given certain works to be completed and this is the only solution in today's uh, dynamic environment and then while delegating this authority certain things must be ensured what to delegate it must be what to delegate will answer the question that what is required by the a particular activity to be done what kind of authority is required by them and uh, the person concerned whether he is in a position to exercise that authority or not his capability to exercise that authority so what to delegate is the question and then when to delegate when it's required if there is no requirement uh, there is no requirement of delegation of authority and whom to delegate is also equally important he must be competent enough to uh, use that authority properly justifiably towards achievement of the organizational goal so in any organization before giving delegating the authority these questions must be scrutinized and answered and on being satisfied about it that should be uh, delegation of authority should be exercised and also while entrusting these duties or responsibilities the manager if he gives certain certain uh, delegation to somebody else he must make sure the granting of the authority and the creation of accountability simultaneously it is not only the authority is given and the accountability is not created that strong because he has to ultimately take care of and make an uh, scrutiny and um, uh, account must take an accounts of all those things that what kind of authority is given what is expected from him and what he has done ultimately now you should see that while making this delegation process what are the barriers to the effective delegation what are the things that comes in the way why the authorities are not properly delegated now when you are delegating your authorities the manager concern must be communicate well with the people who are working down there i mean the authority should be very clear it should be communicated properly the people before giving that authority must be motivated the manager must ensure that he has got enough motivation he should be able to influence him by his power his uh, personal capacities by his personal characteristics by his leadership style by his leadership charisma at the same time the person concerned must be uh, willing to carry out the orders if those things are properly seen then the delegation will become effective so otherwise it may create some kind of barrier and then at the same time when you see it what we are seeing right now is from the point of view of the see the juniors are working under the seniors the juniors must be communicated well they must be motivated well they must get influence they must be under good leader and all that but then at the same time there are some thing which are creates a resistance in the minds of the superiors before delegating the things i mean the managers may not sometimes like to delegate uh, the authority to the people maybe he he have got certain things in his mind doubts in his mind or certain fears in his mind and that is number one is the i can do it better myself fellas there are many managers who think that he is the only person who can do the thing uh, competently and the people uh, down below if they give those authorities to them to carry out the work delegate those things to them they may not be able to do it properly that fear is wrong the manager should be able to uh, develop people in such a way so that uh, the people can take responsibility on the shoulders and the work is divided and it's done properly uh the next resistance is lack of ability to direct there are managers who wants to delegate but they don't have the ability to direct them i mean that is a part of their personality he may fear to give their orders to somebody rather than giving certain orders to somebody he may like to do it himself and not create a confrontational situation so how to direct them and the ability to direct them to the proper subordinates is also a question sometimes creates resistance the lack of confidence in subordinates it is somewhat like the first one that the manager may think that um, the people the subordinates to whom i am going to give this uh, particular thing to be done or particular authority i am going to delegate he is not competent he has not doesn't have any confidence on him so the lack of confidence creates that resistance in the minds of the superiors that he may not like to delegate it uh 
other managers who may think that by giving certain authorities delegating certain authorities to the juniors they are going to uh, get certain risk they are going to be involved in certain kind of risk rather than giving it to them it should be done properly uh, it should be done by himself and that aversion to risk is a an another kind of resistance which is created in the minds of the superior and then there are absence of selective controls whenever a manager gives certain authority delegated to the people who are working below it is not the end of the story he should be able to control that he should be able to take an account of what is being done by the people who are working down there to whom the authority is delegated so taking that accountability requires certain kind of control certain kind of control system so uh, merely giving the authority but without any control i think the process will be damaged and the people may not be uh, using their authority properly because they don't have any fear in their mind that nobody is trying to take that control under him when you have seen the resistance of the superiors there are some kinds of resistance from the subordinates also uh number 1 asking what to do rather than taking initiative i mean the people they try to delay the thing they do not want to do the thing rather they will keep on asking about the problem so that uh, it create some sense in the mind of the manager probably he cannot do it or he will not be in a position to do it so rather than taking initiative puts some questions to the manager it's a kind of resistance created by the, the subordinates sometimes subordinates feel that if they do some mistake they will be criticized or even sometimes rebuked by the manager and that creates a resistance in the mind the subordinates well carrying out the authority what has been delegated to, to them they require certain information certain resources at their command so that they can um, complete the complete the work given to him if it is not there then there will be resistance in the mind with a fear that he will not be able to accomplish the work sometimes even the subordinate they may feel that they are overworked and they may resist in accepting the authority to delegate to them and even if the people the subordinates they don't have a confidence in the mind that that they will be able to do it complete complete the work they may resist in uh, doing the work and also as an individual as a human being uh, he may weigh out the subordinates may weigh that by accepting that certain responsibility which is be given to them what kind of incentive they are getting if there is no incentive they may have a chance that uh, the, they may resist to accept the authority being given to them now uh, to overcome the barriers that you have seen so far and uh, there are certain points which uh, needs to be mentioned that there should a proper communication on the uh, side of the manager they should be able to properly communicate their the orders to the people who working below there should a parity principle and parity principle suggests that whenever there is some authority is given to the people certain orders are given to the people that must be uh, compensated with the proper uh, taking the responsibility the accountability of these people that means every person must be given certain authority alongside the responsibility and then uh, it's a, it will be a proper way of giving the authority and at times when it is required they must be should be able to give the incentives now on the basis of this harvey sherman has suggested some typical degree of delegation i mean the delegation may be of different kinds and uh, that depends upon the person concerned the level of the person as well as the personal quality of the person uh, on the basis of which people give the delegation different way number 1 take action no further contact with me is needed because once they have given the orders they are not going to take any delegated the orders then they are not going to see what is being done or what is not being done you do it yourself uh the second aspect means to take action let me know what you did see this has created some accountability if somebody is doing some action and then the manager concern asks yes whatever you did you let me know that is creating a question of accountability so this is a proper way of in doing the giving the authority or the uh, delegation of authority to the people uh, and another manager can say like this that look into the problem let me know what you intend to do do it all is still enough now here you see a little differences there he is asking that see in the problem and give your ideas what you are going to do let me know it 
but you don't do it until unless I allow it to do or I tell you it to do. Now that means it gives an another specific thing to the person concerned to whom the authority is given that the manager is asking for his points of view and asking to know what he is going to do. Another kind of uh, delegation is look into this problem, let me know what you need to do and delay action until I give approval. And I, that means what? You have to hear the person concerned will give whatever he wants to uh, he give as his opinion and what he wants to do in that particular work. But then he has to wait for the approval of the manager concerned. The previous point at this point there is a difference is that let me know what you are doing. You continue to do it until unless I stop you to do it. So there is a complete freedom. But then in the second case, it says that don't do it till I tell you. Now see here, the kind of delegation is more uh, restricted. That whatever is there, work is there, you give your ideas, you continue doing in that, but you do it only when I give the approval. So there is a restriction in this. It is also kind of delegation. The next one may be the look into the problem, let me know alternative actions available with pros and cons and recommend one for my approval. Here they are giving more wider uh, scope for the person concerned to give their uh, his their ideas his ideas on the uh, particular problem. So he is asking for the alternative actions which are available. So give those suggestions and then get the approval from the manager concerned. Look into the problem. Problem. Give me all facts. I will decide what to do. You see, yeah, the problem is uh, given, and he is asking for the facts, but how and what to do will be decided only by him. So there is uh, less scope for the people, the subordinates to do the things. Rather, the participation is very less. And the, so in a participative kind of management, people should be given the delegated the authority. He should be allowed to do the things or under certain guidelines without much restriction so that they can feel that empowerment uh, in a right perspective. We have so far discussed about the delegation of authority, but uh, there is another concept which is known as decentralization of authority. Are they same? The question is there. The decentralization, decentralization of authority and delegation of authority are two different things. Let us see and try to analyze those things. Decentralization and delegation are the two different concepts in the organizations. In delegation, authority is transferred from uh, the superior to the subordinate. Right? It is a process of transferring the authority from one level to the other level. Whereas a decentralization is a, a, a decentralization of authority is a broader in scope and it involves the transfer of authority in the organizational context from top to bottom to the lower ranks of management in the hierarchy. I mean the people can take the decision at their own level. It is not one to one not transferring of authority but it is a transfer of authority organizational wise that certain things are to be decided at certain levels rather than uh, consulting it with the uh, level at the at the higher level. So uh, delegation of authorities whereas it is more one to one whereas the decentralization of authority in the organizational context from top to bottom. Now this the question is whether centralization or uh, decentralization whether it should be done completely or partially yes. As you understand that a centralization of authorities where the people at the top management they keep keep all their powers with them and they do not allow the other people to do anything without their uh, permission or without their approval. So everything is to be done at the, at the highest level. Whereas the decentralization allows the people to work down below and use their discretion, use their authority which is given to them. And so in this sense if there is a complete centralization uh, it is going to be going to delay the activity of the organization because everything which is to be done at the lower level has to be uh, done only after getting approval from the higher level. That will choke the process of uh, the activity of the organization. At the same time, there is absolute decentralization. Only decentralization is there. The control problem is there because it will the people at the highest level they will not be able to always see and control that whatever activities are being done in the lower level is being done in the right spirit in the right way what is desirable. So both the things are not two extremes are not desirable. 
Now, Ernest Dale had certain point of view in this regard. He said that decentralization is where you can say that there is decentralization, number one, when greater number of decisions are made at lower management hierarchy. If in an organization, uh, the lower level, the lower management number of decisions are made are more than at the higher level, it can be called as a decentralization. The more important decisions made lower down. The important decisions are generally made at the, cent at the at top level, which is centralized. But if in a case, in an organization, if the more important decisions are given to the people uh, to be taken at the lower level, it can be said as more decentralized organization. The more functions affected by decisions made at lower levels. If the decisions which are taken at the lower level that affects most of the functions of the organization, it can be a decentralized organization. And if uh, the people, whatever they are doing at the lower level, if no checking is done on them, that means they have been allowed to do the things uh, with their uh, with their discretion and with their knowledge, and they have been given that to check the things for themselves. That means there is more of decentralization in this organization. Now, in every organization, in today's organization, the big organizations. Uh, the principle is not wholly decentralized or wholly centralized. There are certain things which are to be kept to the centralized with the top level, where certain things are given to the people down below, those are decentralized, depending upon the character of the decisions to be taken at the different levels. Now, whether an organization will go for decentralization or not will depend upon certain factors. So, what are the factors that influences the decentralization? Let us see. Number one, uh, by uh, decentralization, uh, the organization would like to see what are the cost is being involved uh, when the decentralization is involved. More decentralization means more number of people are being involved and so the cost is more and also at the same time what the impact is going to fall on the uh, organization. I mean the, what is the sensitivity of the activity which is being done if it is decided at the lower level. So, the cost and impact will influence the decentralization process. In an organization which is a very big size, say like the organization like Reliance, and the huge size organization, the rate of growth is very high, then, then probably uh, decentralization is a very appropriate thing because the big organizations cannot afford to have everything decentralized, uh, centralized with them and keep all the powers with them because the size will not accept that because people have to take decision at every level, not possible for few people to take the decisions in the length and breadth of the organization. It is also required to see the organization's environment. The environment dictates certain things. The competition, the competitors, the way they are acting, the way they are behaving, the way they are uh, performing their management um, activities will decide that what kind of structure an organization should have. because. It is a structure that ultimately produces certain kinds of uh, mm, results in the organization. So, environment will dictate the competition, the competitors, the customers' expectations, and that will also mm, be taken into account. If a manager has to take certain decision with the customer then and there, I think probably those things have to be uh, decentralized at this level. Yeah, well, of course, in every organization, is the philosophy of the top management. The top management may not like to uh, part with their authorities and delegate to the people below with a fear that uh, it may be um, uh, he may not they may not be in a position to keep and control over them. So it is the philosophy of the top management which will also influence the decentralization process. At the same time, it is the philosophy of the subordinate manager. The the manager concerned is going to uh, give the authorities to the people. He would like to keep the authority with him as far as possible. It depends upon the person concerned, his uh, uh, leadership qualities that will uh, determine whether he wants to part with the, uh, uh, the authority or he wants to keep it with them. So, depending on that, the things will be influencing the decentralization process. Now, to summarize this, authority is the right to command, you have seen, and there is a classical view and acceptance theory on it. The classical view says that authority goes from top to bottom. But the acceptance theory says it goes from bottom to up. Bernard suggested that if the authority is to be given or to be accepted by the subordinate, there should be certain conditions. There are four conditions which have been uh, described there. Authority is the right to command or issue orders 
but power is the capacity to influence others so it is not necessarily that uh, by the authority somebody will have power power will involve certain uh, personal qualities of the person concerned the delegation process is a process by which authority is passes from one organizational level to another from senior to junior from one level to the other level now but while delegating the authority there are many barriers and those barriers are to be overcome these barriers may come from the subordinate side that barriers may come from the superior side and those barriers are to be uh, taken care of and should be uh, removed and avoided as far as possible and also we have seen that uh, the decentralization of authority and delegation of authority are two different conce concepts delegation of authority is a one to one authority transfer decentralization is an organization wise activity it's a decision taken by the organization uh, where the authorities are to be taken and at which level thank you very much